Hey, what's up guys? Tom here with Extreme Air Vents. Hey, I'm going to do a little different video today. I'm going to showcase some of the gear that Castle X does. I've been working with Castle X clothing for a little over 10 years and over the years they've improved some major things, especially for us mountain riders. So I kind of want to show the newest gear. I've got some 2020 gear back here in a box that they just sent me and I'm really excited to show it off. I've got my stepson Brighton here with me. He's going to be helping running the camera. Brighton also wears Castle X clothes. Brighton, what do you think about Castle X? Um, I think they're really awesome because their clothes are extremely comfortable, they're lightweight, and they keep you the temperatures that you want to be. Heck yeah, and for a teenage kid, well not a teenager yet, he's 12, he rocks it on the snowmobile. Already. Yeah. Already, so he wears the full castle giddy up, and he loves it. Rides out here in these fields all winter long, and uh, he's been wearing castle since he was a little guy. So he's gonna be in the back here watching the camera for me and making sure that everything's running good. Which incidentally, he's pretty good on the camera too. So <clears throat> anyway, here we are. Um, I'm gonna take us back here, pull out this box of Castle Lux clothing. I want to throw this out as a disclaimer. I have been working with Castle X and they did send me this stuff. I didn't buy it, but honestly, I want to go over exactly why I like Castle. Um, they aren't paying me to do this. They did send me the gear, so that's uh, full disclosure there. Um, but let's go ahead and check out um, this year's 2020 gear. I've got a mono suit that I love. Now I'm going to go with a little history on the mono suit. About five years ago, <clears throat> Castle X approached me and they said, what do you think about the mono suit? We feel like this is going to be a big thing going forward. And I personally thought, nah, mono suits are dumb. These are what the old timers used to wear with their funky, you know, one piece suits. And uh, I didn't know all the technology that went into them. I thought personally that the coat and pants was going to be where it was at going forward. Uh, obviously that's still popular, but the mono suits you've seen over the past, or over the recent, whatever time, the last five, six years, mono suits have become a lot more popular. Castle X jumped on when they were in their infancy and just becoming um, things that people were, were wanting, and they've, they've come up with an awesome product. So the the first year they came out with a mono suit, they sent me one and they said try this out and after that I was sold. I'm going to show you the features why I like the Castle X mono suit. <clears throat> There's small details that they've taken care of that, that are quite frankly really awesome. Um, so a little history going back, Castle X about 10, I don't know, 8 years ago or so, they flew me, one of my buddies and another guy from Idaho to their um, headquarters in Wisconsin and we had a two-day round table they basically sat us down and they said what do you want as mountain riders it was a panel of three three mountain riders uh, both two of us from Utah and at the time I was living in Utah and another guy from Idaho <clears throat> and we wrote down everything we wanted and they took notes and essentially the next year they started producing mountain gear um, one of the things that I had struggled with in the way past was I loved the Castle X colors, the durability, um, you know, all the, all the good things that I like about it, how, how it would keep you warm. But one of the things we struggled with in the mountains is we get too hot. And so I needed lighter clothing that would still keep you dry and that was movable, easy, lightweight. Um, but that we could layer. So Castle X took that to heart. They started producing shells. They started producing pants and bibs and pant and uh, coats that would um, that didn't have all the thick insulation that the Midwest and the East Coast riders really need for the for the super cold and you know trail riding type snowmobiling. So um, let me. Crack out this brand new 2020 mono suit and we'll go over the features 
and uh, what's awesome about it. It's a brand new suit. I haven't even seen it yet. So let's pull it out. Sorry, we had a major camera malfunction right there. Um, so here's the mono suit. Okay. Got a hood. So the standard features of this Castlex mono suit, I'm going to just read off of their uh, literature here. They use a Ventex waterproofing. Ventex is, I don't know, where, where it stands compared to Gore-Tex, Sympatex, whatever Tex. Um, but anyways, it is a really awesome material. So one of the things I've always loved about Castle X is their clothing remains soft, pliable, even down to minus 20. Some of the other brands, um, we like to joke that it's Special K, their Gore-Tex or whatever they're using is when it gets cold, that stuff is like crinkly, non-flexible, really stiff material. One of the things that Castle's always, since I've worked with them, has always focused on keeping their gear soft, pliable, and um, doesn't get crinkly. If that, if that may not be the word to use, but it's it's soft and pliable. You you know the guy out there that comes out of his trailer at 20 below, going riding, and his gear's like. <laughs> I hope those sounds come through because that's an awesome reproduction of that noise. Anyway, so this clothing does not do that. It's really flexible, um, which I've always loved about Castle. It stays flexible all year long. So let's get into some of the details and the features of this thing. So this is just a shell only. So I'll kind of get in close here. They have a mesh lining and that's it no insulation this they do have an insulated mono suit but this is a non-insulated this is the shell only so you got the the mesh just to kind of keep keep your clothing and stuff away from the the backer um and then then it's just the the shell so anyway moving down these mono suits this is one of the things i didn't realize when they were talking mono suit. I was thinking old school, like it was gonna be weird, but these mono suits actually have suspenders in them. So you essentially put them on exactly like a pair of bibs. Um, and then you can cinch it up or down to adjust the pant length and the uh, inseam based on these. And then there's some Velcro straps on the outside that you can tighten to make the waist area so it, you get a perfect fit. Um, so I actually love that feature because essentially you're wearing bibs and a light coat, but it's all together. So you stay, for whatever reason, you stay warmer and drier, but you also stay cooler, if that can make sense. Because you have free flowing air, you don't have these warm hot spots getting trapped where you have overlapping layers. It's just, it's super comfortable. Um, so as I move down the pant, I have a reinforced knee area, and it's a preformed, pre-curved knee. So you don't get the the goofy stretching in the knee area when you when you're bending. And then as we move down to the pant leg, this is one of the features. You can see this snap here. Have a big, nice Velcro. But when I met with Castle years ago, all of the pants that I'd used in the past, they all had Velcro on the bottom. But as soon as that Velcro got any powder in it, then the Velcro became useless and this flap just dangled. This piece would get snow in it and it would just dangle. It wouldn't. So I told him, you know what you ought to do? You ought to throw a snap there and then you can lock it in. And then that flap doesn't matter if you get powder in it, whatever. So it's a great little feature. Seems like a dumb detail, but you know, when you're out there riding and you want to stay dry and warm, it's a little feature like that that can that can help do it. So 
going into the snow gator part. This is at the bottom, okay? Nice, big, wide snow gator. This is another thing you'll notice. Big, wide Velcro snap at the top and the bottom. So you put this around your boot. Obviously, it's got the stretchy, stretchy area, and then it also has the uh, the snap you can wrap around your boot to keep that keep it secure down against your boot. So this area, it's nice and wide, big wide, and then makes a good tight seal around your boot. Now, if we move up to the um, most of the cool features are on the front, so you know we can go into the back. There is a flex zone here, right? Uh, it's hard to see in the camera, right here. It's kind of a stretchy flex zone, so when you're bending forward, that kind of makes that transition from the pant to coat area, um, so it, it doesn't get tight on you as you bend forward. Okay. So obviously we talked about the hood. I typically take these hoods off. Um, great feature, some people might like it. You know, if maybe for snowboarding or something this would, but for me, riding in the powder, this being ends up like a big snow scoop. It fills up with snow, you take your helmet off, you go to put, your, uh, put this on your head, next thing you know, you got a head full of snow. So, um, it has an inside pocket. It's kind of a cool little feature. It does have the pass-through in the inside pocket for your headphones. But you can put your cell phone on the inside. On the other side, it has a Velcro. Um, gotta find it here. There's a Velcro one right here. And I think the, the purpose of this one, it's a big one. You could put goggles in there. I typically have never done that, but you could. So put your goggles in there and you could defrost them, I guess, or whatever you want, put in there. But So that's the inside. The outside, you'll notice there's, on both sides, these are identical. There's venting here and by your armpit. And we'll put this on Brighton so you can kind of see these features. But another cool thing, if you put this sleeve on, You'll notice it has this little uh, gator, I'm gonna call it, I don't know. But you can slide, that keeps any snow and wind from going up inside your sleeve area. Which is a big deal when you're riding in the powder or cold and you don't want that air to be going up in here and filling your suit with cold air. So um, obviously it's got a nice Velcro strap to tighten around your glove or, or whatever you're doing there. In the summer, or not summer, in the warmer spring riding, I typically don't wear that. You can just, it just stows in there, out of the way, no big deal, okay? So, <clears throat> another cool feature that I, I forgot to mention is out here on the end, there's another little pocket, okay? You could put a cell phone in here or whatever you want, really, but Castle X includes on a lanyard, a little bungee lanyard, a microfiber cloth, okay? That may not seem like that big of a deal, but it's these small little details that make it so, you know, make this clothing worthwhile. So this is a great goggle wipe or your glasses wipe. It's right there stowed, it's on a little snap, stows up in there, so quite honestly you, uh, you don't have to pack anything extra to wipe your goggles with. It's built into the clothing. It may not seem like that big of a deal, but it's a great little feature, okay? And then uh, we'll get this thrown on Brighton here and show you a couple of other little features. Brighton, my stepson, he's gonna come back in. He's gonna go ahead and put this on for me. He's almost as big as I am, 12 years old. <coughs> Pretty soon he's gonna be still in my gear. So as he gets this put on, I'm gonna just go over some of the other little features that these have. Um, so Castle X 
one of the the deals that when they uh, had us at their round table I like having a little bit of padding in the knees so one of the things that they did was in these on the back side of the knee I'm gonna just show them here Brighton they have a knee pad it's gonna be hard to see see that velcro right touch that right there Brighton right here. okay right there that area that has a really small closed cell foam pad in it there's a velcro strap take that out and we can pull we can see what that foam there's a foam pad in there anyway that little tiny foam pad is exactly what I wanted for my mountain pants because as you know when it's get when you're jumping around back and forth um, it's nice to have just a little bit of padding on your knee area uh, you know especially if there's some ice that builds up on your seat or something it just takes away that discomfort of having your kneecap sitting on a cold chunk of ice so okay Brighton's got the so as you can see these uh, the straps go on like a normal bib and then you zip these full length zippers all the way down go ahead and pull that up now Brighton full length zippers these are sealed zippers all the way down you got pockets on both sides so you can stow these are actually fleece lined pockets which is pretty sweet Brighton wants to say something and also right here it makes it easy to get on so your legs not like really tight. You can slip them on and just go. Yep. So you can put your boots on before you even put your pants on. Which that's how I typically do it because you're out there in a cold trailer. Put your boots on so you're not walking around on the cold floor of the trailer. And then you can slide them in to the uh, you know zip those all the way up and slide them in. So you've got go ahead and zip that up, bud. Let's. Uh, Okay, obviously it's a little bit too big for him, but we'll go here. This is a fleece lined collar area, which is really nice when it's cold. Okay, um, so on the outside, you've got these Velcro straps that you can tighten up around your waist. Now, obviously, you're gonna try to order this thing as close to you as you can to the size that you are. This is a medium. Um, and then another cool thing that Castle did was you can see the the D rings here on each side of the front. Okay, so if you ride with a tether, you don't have to have it crossing your body at a weird. You know, sometimes on some of the older skidoos they came from the left side, and if you had your D ring on the right side, it came across your body, and that was just kind of a goofy setup. Uh, so Castle eliminated that problem, put one on e either side. So no matter what year your sled is, what model, make, whatever, um, it, you're covered. So you can hook your tether in there. You're good to go. So that's the Castle X mono suit. And in my opinion, I love the suit now after riding with it for this will be my fourth year, fourth season in a mono suit. And quite honestly, it's one of the my favorite ways to ride because you're just so flexible and free and the movement is non-restrictive at all. So anyways, we're gonna look at a couple of other things. So hang tight. Okay guys, the other thing I wanna talk about is this Castle X mid layer. I wear this thing all year long. This one right here is probably four or five years old, but it is a real soft, super comfortable. On those super cold days when you're out riding, I will typically wear this underneath my suit. So I'll wear thermal underwear and then just this and then my mono suit. And that will, I rode, we rode 18 below in Island Park last year. This was a perfect setup top and bottom. So these mid layers, man, they're so comfortable. Brighton's wearing one too. And I mean, we wear these things all year. They're awesome. Not just for snowmobiling, but for hunting, camping, four wheeling, whatever. Hiking.
highly recommend the mid layer. Okay, next item we're going to talk about. I got to take you there. Okay, we're going to check out this little box of goodies in here, and there's the next item. These gloves. Okay, so everybody thinks no big deal on gloves. Brighton, will you hold the camera? Okay, so I want to go over, these are my favorite gloves ever. Not just because they're from Castle. These honestly are the best gloves I've ever had. I've got a pair of these when they first came out with them and they're still going strong. I want to go over some of the details. These gloves specifically are called the Stance Glove. There was a lot of time and effort that went into these gloves. This is a Hapura um, waterproofing. Let me read from here because I don't... They have durable stretch air dura outer shell, premium 3M thin slate, water resistant insulation, 80G top, 70 grams on the palm with a siliconized water resistant leather palm. So that siliconized leather palm is an amazing setup, okay? So you can see that this is a full leather palm and some of the little features on here fully reinforced across the palm area. So these gloves are, are gonna last forever. They're reinforced in all the right places. You can see pre-curved. So you put your hand in these gloves from the very first day, they're ready to go. Pre-curved, and you'll see on the thumb, both thumbs, now obviously your right thumb, where you're gonna be spending all the throttle therapy time, but it, on both, they have the reinforced thumb area, okay? So these gloves, quite honestly, are never gonna wear out. I've had a pair of these like I said, for years. Um, very waterproof, super durable, excellent grip down to minus, you know, I don't ride typically after minus 20, it just doesn't any, isn't comfortable anymore. Um, but this is my go-to for everything. So one of the, another little cool feature that you don't really think about is they put in this little leather tab here and you may not understand what that's for, but when your hands are wet and cold, you can grab the tab and you pull the, pull the gloves on. And as you can see, man, those things fit like a glove. No pun intended. Okay? Excellent dexterity. And I, I just love these things. So that little tab makes it so that when you're pulling them on, just a little bit easier to, to get some leverage to pull them on. One of the things I love about the Castle X glove is a lot of gloves that I had in the past, when your hands were wet, not necessarily from the gloves. Now the gloves, you know, obviously, if you are sweating, your hands are gonna be wet. So when you pull your gloves off when they're wet, typically the liner wants to come with your glove. That doesn't happen with these gloves, okay? So the nice thing is, no matter how wet or whatever your hands are, you go to put them in and they're right back in the holes. One of the things that drives me crazy is those gloves that have the liners that are not sewn into the glove and are loose in there. So you pull your fingers out and all the fingers come with it. And then you gotta sit there and try to figure out how to get your fingers back into each hole with the liner. That's annoying. So these stance gloves have been an awesome glove. This palm, is money right here. I think these babies retail for around, don't quote me, I'll probably post it below. I think they retail around $69. For $69, you cannot beat these gloves. I mean, there's gloves out there that people are paying $150 for more in the snowmobile industry. Nothing like these. Won't even touch them. Okay, next thing I wanna go over is the Castle X helmet. So let me give a little history of this Castle X helmet. For years, I rode HJC, I've had Thor helmets, I've had Bell helmets, I even tried a Climb helmet, 
and I've paid a lot of money for helmets over the years. Um, <clears throat> so about two, three years ago, about three years ago, I've never had a neck injury. I've never had um, any neck problems, but I started noticing as I would get done riding, my neck was just super sore, and I didn't know if it was from being a heavy helmet or what was going on. So I started thinking I needed to go carbon. And that was, uh, you know, just if I could reduce the weight, then obviously I'd, it'd be hopefully less neck, neck pain at the end of a long ride. So a couple years ago, I contacted Castle and I asked them if HJC, which they distributed HJC helmets. I asked them if they were going to be producing or could produce a carbon helmet. And they said to me, essentially, we can do one better. We don't have to give you a carbon. We've developed a helmet that is the weight of a carbon, but is in a polycarbonate shell. And I was like, sweet, I gotta have one. They sent me one out, and I rode with it the whole, it was a non, it wasn't Castle branded at this point. Um, so I decided, or I rode that season with that helmet, and it was amazing. I don't know how much lighter it was, probably a pound lighter, I'm gonna guess. <clears throat> and so they told me that they were gonna be coming up with these new helmets. So that's where these these castle these new castle motocross style helmets come in. This one right here is a Mode MX. I always ride Mode MX style helmets. It's just my thing. I like goggles. I like being able to change them out. Probably not a great thing for trail riders, but for mountain riders, it's the only way to go. So full face just doesn't work. <clears throat> Let me break this thing out and kind of go over some of the sweet details of this helmet. So this thing retails, again, I'm going from memory, I think these are 149, between 149 and 159, 150 bucks, let's just say, for this helmet. And I mean, there's guys out there, there's people out there selling helmets for whew, $400 or something like that for the same weight as we're talking here. We're gonna actually go weigh it. But this helmet is amazing, okay? Not only does it just look freaking awesome, but it is super lightweight. I mean, we'll, we'll go weigh it here. I think these are coming in at slightly, I mean, we're talking grams within a carbon. And this is a size large, so a lot of the carbon helmet companies weigh a small. When they give a weight, I've seen the 1300 gram helmets, that's in a size small. So you've got to realize when you're ordering a carbon helmet that weighs 1300 grams, but you're ordering an XL or a large, that's not going to be 1300 grams. So anyways, that's a complete other thing to go off of. So pause. What? No, because yours isn't the same. You need to just kind of hang out and be quiet, okay? <clears throat> okay. So, the uh, Castle X helmet. Let's just go over some of the features. Aside from being really lightweight, still carries the... I'm, I'm not an expert on helmets. DOT, Snell, blah, 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 certified. So, it's still got the certifications, but it's ultra lightweight, polycarbonate. Okay, so just on the outside, it does have the, if you ride motocross, or even some snowmobilers wear the neck brace. Uh, my brother-in-law riding motorcycles wears the neck brace, and this is the shelf that sits on that. Great feature, it's got the around here for your goggle. Really sweet, um, nice, nice area, the padding is is awesome, but the vent, these have great vents. So it's got vents here and here, and then up and up in here. And then they exit out the back. I mean, that's like a fighter right there, fighter jet. Got the cool induction and exit. Okay. Really nice, padded. These are really comfortable, well built helmets. Um, 
your mouth guard area, very durable, pretty well, uh, I mean we ride these helmets honestly all year, motorcycling, downhill mountain biking, and uh, snowmobiling. So this helmet realistically works for all seasons. And one of the things that I've, I had, I had a climb helmet years ago and it was, it was honestly too vented and my head always froze. And so you had to put this like insulation liner that you had to snap in and out of it so that your head didn't get cold. And then the majority of the time I was taking it in and out all the time because it, it would block off all venting, then you'd sweat. This thing is, has never, I mean, it, it vents just right. So never too cold, never too hot. Um, I mean, essentially it's got, it's got all the features of the very, very top motocross helmets for snowmobiling. We're gonna go weigh it right now. This thing is, uh, I mean, just handling it, it's, it's ultra lightweight. So let's go, let's go check it out. <laughs> Okay, here we are at the Extreme Air Vents shipping desk. And uh, hang on, Brighton, let me make sure this is at zero. This is on pounds. We're going to go ahead and change this to grams. That's ounces. Grams. Okay, let's set that up there. Ooh. Okay. 1434. Okay, we'll switch that to three pounds, 2.6 ounces. Honestly, I don't have another helmet here to compare to, but that's way lightweight. 50.6 ounces, 1434 grams. That's the actual weight. I mean, this just came out of a brand new box. That's what you're that's what you're seeing. I mean, we're we're literally talking three pounds, 2.6 ounces there. Castle X Mode MX helmet. Okay, back to the box. I'm gonna pull out. We got some goggles in here. We're gonna go over those. Whoops. I wanna go over these ones first. This is their Trace goggle. Brighton, will you hold these for me? and then pull them out. So this is a OTG goggle. If you don't know what that means, it's an over the glass goggle. Go ahead and pull it out, buddy. Strong boy, he's gotta eat all the time. Mm -hmm. What are you eating? Pretzels. Okay, so let's get this thing set up. Okay, we got the OTG Castle Trace Trace goggle. Okay, and uh, one of the reasons why I like an OTG goggle is if you look at the side here, you can see the frame is offset just a little bit, and I mean it's got a little bit bigger opening for going over. I don't wear glasses. I still kind of like them, so, but it's offset right here, and that, so when you uh, put these on your helmet, it doesn't make quite as, it has a lot smoother junction going over your helmet. So this is a mirrored lens. Now just as a, a little bit of a personal thing, I don't do well with blue lenses in any light, so I have to have Especially in low light, I have to use a yellow or a rose. Otherwise, I don't see anything. If I use a blue, it, there's nothing. I got nothing. So I'm, I'm riding blind with blue. But these are actually a rose. You can see through there. It's a rose color with a blued mirror. Now, I don't know the science behind that or how they do it, but that's really cool. So this, these goggles work for all conditions. You can see through there, it's a rose color. Um, so they work great in the low light as well as sunny conditions. I believe, 
I am seriously no expert in goggles. I just think that the mirroring probably helps in when it's really bright to kind of reflect away some of the rays or something. Anyway, so these goggles, I think they retail around, I'll, I'll post it somewhere. I'm gonna say 59, somewhere around there, $65, 50 to, 50 to 60. So excellent um, anti-fog. They've got venting top and bottom, dual pane lens, another great feature that years ago when we were talking to Castle, it's little features like this, but they put this nose piece on there. That was kind of a big deal, but it snaps off if you don't want it. So when you have your helmet on, and we'll show this, the helmet connection, but I, I personally, and this is what I told them, I don't like wearing a ball of clava. It's just too restrictive. I don't like breathing through it. So I typically, even when it's really cold, I just, I guess my face gets used to it. Um, I usually wear something around my neck to protect my neck, but my nose and stuff is, is usually open. So this is a big deal going down a trail because it blocks a lot of the air and makes a really nice seal on your um, helmet. So we'll show that, but essentially um, this is like your standard motocross style goggle. It's got the siliconized strap so it stays really nice on your helmet, doesn't slip around. And uh, big, you can see big fleeced foam makes a really sweet seal against your face. I mean, it's look how thick that foam is. These are really well built goggles. So we'll go, uh, we'll go ahead and show the next pair that I have. Put this on. Oh, my hair is extremely messy. It's okay. <coughs> I might steal this. Okay, got bright in here with my helmet on, and as you can see, looking from the front, this helmet makes a really sweet seal. So this is what I was talking about, that transition right here with the OTG, makes a really nice transition because it's offset just a little bit, but as you can see in there, that seal is tight all the way around this helmet with that foam. There's no air gaps. The only air that's getting through is just right here in the front. Castle's done a really good job of pairing up their goggle and helmets to fit perfectly together. So, great seal here all the way around. And as you can see, going down the trail, the wind only has this tiny little area right here to get through. Um, so if you don't wear a ball clava like me, then no problem. Is it a balaclava or a baklava? What are those? What is a balaclava? How do you, baklava? Balaclava. Baklava, I think, is a dessert, Greek dessert, maybe? I don't know. Baklava. I think, don't know. Greek dessert. I don't like wearing a Greek dessert on my head. Well, it, I mean, it probably tastes good. Maybe, maybe a Greek dessert on your head when it's cold would be good. Okay. The next pair of goggles we're gonna talk about is the stage. 
Now these ones I ordered with a clear lens. They come with mirror, they come with all kinds of different color choices of lens. I sometimes do some night riding, so I wanted a clear, dual pane, good snowmobiling goggle that I could use at night. So um, this is not an OTG or over the glass type goggle, but it still has a nice offset. Not quite as much as the other one, you can see, but it's this, this is a fully vented all the way around goggle so you don't fog. Again, the Castle X snap-on nose piece. This piece snaps on and off. And obviously these lenses are all, inter you know, you can change them out. But, um, siliconized strap. So, it's got a nice foam, really nice thick foam around. I think this goggle is 49, roughly 49 or 50, 55 dollars. I'll put a link into their catalog at the end, but uh, these goggles have been great. Over the years, I've, I've exclusively used Castle X goggles, and you know, you can spend upwards of 250 dollars, and some of the cheaper brands are, you know, they're wanting 89 dollars. For $49 to $69, Castlex goggles are, are awesome. Great features and uh, totally worth the money. So that's the uh, that's the items I'm just gonna showcase for Castle X. I wanna put a special shout out to Castlex. It's castlesales.com. Go check them out. If you have any questions down below, put your comments, and uh, I want to put a dirty little plug in for here for Extreme Air Vents too. As the owner of Extreme Air Vents, I make all kinds of vents for Gen 4, Skidoo's, Polaris. Um, this vent right here is extremely popular. We did somewhere around 900 of those last year. Um, another sweet vent is this extra air intake. There's actually another one that goes underneath the gauge right here on the on the uh, plenum. So we can essentially almost double your intake area into the stock air box not affecting any electronics or anything. Um, these vents right here have been on this sled since I picked it up. I brought it home, put these vents on 2017 and still great condition. I always seal around them, but as you can see, excellent shape and uh, the last way longer than the stock ones. The stock ones will be torn out in no time. So check us out, extremeairvents.com, and thanks for watching. Yeah,